Hello, um, and welcome back to the course and to the module one, session two, about responsible innovations and development in Africa. And today's topic will be um, a basic discussion about knowledge and Africa, kind of background information, understanding for uh, innovations, innovation studies. So we need to know first, what is knowledge and how knowledge develops and how the development of knowledge can take place in African context. And there is a learning assessment as you see it from here and a few pages in the reference book. So uh, then there is a possibility to, to know a bit more about this topic. So let's go first to the key points. So after this introduction, I will mention here what are the key points of this session. The first point is that actually we need to stress knowledge. So knowledge is needed in the background of responsible innovations. So we have to understand what is knowledge, how idea, ideas develop into knowledge that consequently can develop into innovation. So knowledge is something that we need to know. So knowledge is needed in the background of responsible innovations that support sustainable development and inclusive development in Africa. Um, the second point is that um, knowledge generation is a process. It's a social process. So knowledge do not appear as such, but it appears in a process. And in this process are connected material aspects, communication aspects, and cognitive aspects. Cognitive meaning understanding. So material communication and cognitive aspects, they come together in a process that then turns into knowledge. And one very interesting and particular and useful aspect is that in Africa, there is indigenous knowledge or such knowledge exists in various parts. And that has existed for many generations. It has proved to be sustainable and it's unique in these contexts. And that kind of indigenous knowledge, actually that can provide an additional competitive advantage for Africa, African macro regions, African countries, African localities to develop knowledge in you know, direction of economically and socially sustainable development. So first, we need to understand what is knowledge, how knowledge develops, and what are the advantages of that in Africa. So we, we talk about knowledge development in contemporary world a lot, or we talk about knowledge-based societies, and learning is part of knowledge development, and there are various types of knowledge and they develop into new knowledge. So there is always something novelty in knowledge. And we need to know, uh, scrutinize a bit, though it might look quite academic, but still I insist, even for very applied projects in innovations, we need to scrutinize what is, uh, what is knowledge. And, and let's go to the philosophy, and very briefly, because a philosopher like a few thousand years ago, Plato, he told something that is still valid and useful today. So what is knowledge? Knowledge is an individually interpreted and justified true belief. 
So it's individually interpreted, so everyone interprets this knowledge, and it is justified. So it means that it's not an opinion, personal opinion, but one needs to justify it. And true, it means its ambition, its aim, it's to be truthful, but in the end, it's a belief. So it's not a final truth, but it's a ongoing understanding of the issues that we understand so far. So in that sense, this is a very nice definition, what is knowledge, because new knowledge accumulates over existing knowledge. So people add new perspectives to contemporary understanding, and then others recognize that this adding to the existing knowledge is valuable. And then that combination turns into a new knowledge. And often physical proximity is useful because I said knowledge development is a social process. And when people meet together face to face situations, that's, that's often beneficial for knowledge development. And one needs to have a cognitive proximity. So it means that people need to understand each other. However, if they think exactly the same way, then knowledge do not develop because people just share the same understanding. So in cognitive proximity, one needs a difference in their people's approach. If it's too much, then people do not understand each other. So I spent quite a lot of time for this because this is a fundamental point in my aspect about knowledge. So how knowledge then develops? We need three aspects. One is materiality. The second is communication. And the third one is cognition. So we need physical items that can be text, that can be computers, pen, paper, and so these are physical aspects, materiality. Then we need to have an interaction, interaction between people that develop knowledge. It can be face to face, it can be distant through, you know, various media, email, social media, and so on. And finally, we need cognition. So understanding each other in the development of knowledge. Nowadays, we talk about also artificial intelligence and the communication and cognition, understanding between humans and machines. So it's not anymore just people who understand, but also machines do understand today. So materiality, communication and cognition. And, and while there might be um, available new types of knowledge, we need an absorption of this knowledge. So there needs to be an absorptive capacity in people, enterprises, organizations and regions to be able to use this new knowledge. So we need existing knowledge, technologies and ability to use, utilize this um, new knowledge. And then a couple of other aspects when we talk about uh, knowledge in more practical sense. So there is a definition or division between explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge. So explicit knowledge is something that is very easy to communicate from a person to a person. These are like models or patterns or scientific formula and so on. So everyone understands this uh, in an easy way and uh, they are able to share this knowledge even through distance. However, in the other end of this understanding is uh, tacit knowledge and this tacit knowledge is something that is uh, close to a person. It's a personal understanding, it's a personal practice and interaction. And often, you know, artists or very skilled, you know, talented people, they cannot really explain how they do these things, but they just say that they can do that. So that is something that we can call uh, 
uh, passive knowledge. Then uh, these are important to uh, you know think in practice. Of course, there are explicit aspects and tacit aspects in many kinds of knowledge, even in scientific formula. Sometimes in the background there is some tacit aspects. You know, scholars know how to do, but they cannot explain exactly how to do it. Then a few other aspects about knowledge. So knowledge can be seen in different ways as know what, know why, know how, and know who. So this comes from uh, innovation scholars. So know what, meaning that we have access to information, know why we understand the relationships, the causality of, you know, what, what comes out of this and that. We know uh, how, we know the capability, we have the capability to do things and we know who. So how to access knowledge and what are the capabilities of others. So there are also tacit elements in these definitions of knowledge. And let, let's go still through one set of uh, knowledge. Analytical knowledge is one of them. Then we have uh, synthetic knowledge and then symbolic knowledge. So three aspects still. Uh, analytical knowledge that is created through scientific knowledge. It's often abstract, it's universal, we can use it in, you know, mathematical, statistical information, to maybe with the machines and so on. So it's formal models, codified science and rational pro processes. So research and development into science often supports the development of analytical knowledge. Then synthetic knowledge, synthetic knowledge is something that is useful and relevant for society as such. So utilizing the existing knowledge and, and using it. So we, we aim to solve practical problems in society with this synthetic knowledge. And that's common for engineering, machinery industries. So we solve the issues. We, create solutions. It's not abstract like, you know, analytical knowledge. This is more practical. And the third aspect, third base, is this symbolic knowledge. And this symbolic knowledge is, in the 21st century, increasingly important. So it's about aesthetic dimension of products. You know, think about mobile phones. So, you know, technologically, rather similar, but then the aesthetic quality makes a difference between iPhone and maybe Android phones. It's about design and images and how these uh, culturally loaded objects are economically used. So symbolic knowledge is very important. And um, that's uh, something that people should think about also in relation to innovations. Are innovation based on analytical, synthetic or symbolic knowledge or what kind of combinations? So then let's go for the last few minutes to the knowledge basis in the African context. Yes, it is obvious that investment in analytical knowledge development, that requires uh, very substantial funding and investments into skills of people and related infrastructure, laboratories and so on. And it requires often long time, five years, 10 years and so on. And these often lack, unfortunately, in African countries and universities or if they do have, then in many reference countries in Europe and North America, there are plenty of such laboratories that are more competitive. So in that sense, that is something one has to bear into account. The other one is about developing synthetic knowledge. That's in, that is a one very viable option to tackle and integrate societal needs in Africa. And of course, the symbolic knowledge, what I referred also. 
So there is something flavor into this, you know, existing goods, existing materials, existing infrastructures that, you know, makes them more um, attractive. And then finally, uh, a few words about this combination, how knowledge is then produced and exploited. So there are knowledge producers and then there are knowledge users or exploit exploiters. And for that reason, there is something that, uh, you know, research and education that is dealing with uh, knowledge generation and diffusion. And then there is knowledge application ex exploitation. So please pay up attention to the details in this uh, figure. And of course, uh, on the top, there are policy makers, you know, international or intergovernmental organizations, national organizations, ministries, committees, parliaments, and so on. And on the bottom, there are, you know, civil society that is connected to both generation of knowledge and application. So this is a complex system how then knowledge uh, develops in societal context. So this refers, like I already mentioned, to research and education, the generation and diffusion, and this is for application and exploitation, in which you know you have public and private ventures, research, development, and innovation, again, public and private. So both aspects need to be discussed and thought when we think about knowledge. And then something what I already mentioned in the beginning, it's this of indigenous knowledge. Indigenous knowledge that exists in, you know, all around in the world, but in many places with the modern development that these roots have been, you know, taken away. So for that reason, one should pay, pay attention to this indigenous knowledge in African uh, communities and think how this indigenous knowledge could be linked or connected to innovation processes. Because that kind of knowledge, has, it has been accumulated over time. It's unique. It has some competitive advantage. And it, it is a niche that maybe can be useful for developing innovations. And it is often based on this tacit learning, you know, learning by imitation, learning through demonstration, learning through repetition. Of course, external knowledge influences that, but the roots are in local context. However, you know, it is a challenging issue to utilize it. You know, sometimes you just think that, okay, let's take the indigenous knowledge away and utilize and exploit it. And that can create really a problem because Indigenous knowledge is often very useful and, and needed aspect in the everyday lives of local communities. Yeah, some countries have mentioned that indigenous knowledge is their asset for national development, but how to do it in practice is, is an, uh, a challenge. And how to put, incorporate this indigenous knowledge into innovation systems, to knowledge providers, and exploiters, that is something that, you know, you could, you could think about because, you know, um, it is a issue that varies in different contexts, in different countries. So indigenous knowledge, the case of Hudia. So Hudia is a cactus plant in Kalahari Desert in the southern uh, part of Africa, and it has been used by some people, you know, the uh, an ancient tribe, inhabitants, uh, hunter-gatherer groups, there for centuries, especially to uh, prevent thirst and hunger in these uh, situations in which you cannot be sure that you get food and, and, and water. And the case is about that then, you know, a South African um, researchers discovered that this is uh, very nice land that could be used for other purposes as well then international you know uh, private enterprises try to uh, utilize it for um, you know in the western world to patent it and uh, use it in a food industry 
to deliver this uh, material for people so that they would not feel hungry and they could, you know, get slimmer. But in the end, after kind of uh, international and national and local uh, petitions, the international organizations withdraw from the project. So then about conclusions, final points here. So as I mentioned in the beginning, knowledge is something that is never fully reached. It develops always in interaction between people. So it's a social process in which is relevant face-to-face -face interaction and access to external knowledge. Knowledge generation is a process. It's not similar everywhere. But we can think about analytical, synthetic, and symbolic bases that are behind knowledge generation. And in Africa, indigenous knowledge that has existed for generations and it can become a competitive advantage to de develop contemporary economic and social development in sustainable sense. And these are the key references. So I stop here. Thank you very much.